do that? I don't remember. But I feel like we're gonna have to do it now. <laughs> okay. It is Tuesday. Wow. <laughs> Beep up. <laughs> oh, all right, beauties. Let's let's talk. I know, I know. I just wanted to do that. I, just really I liked it. No, I liked it. <laughs> Good morning, beauties. Let's talk about being pretty. pretty. Hearts. <laughs> wow. I don't know what well, that song I won't is, be, but I won't be taking Beyonce's job anytime soon. So no, no neither of us will. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but Raquel, you wanted to, you, you tell me what, I don't know. You just said, we're talking about a thing. And I said, this okay. Is, and I got it. onto my internet computer, um, device. And so did you. And now we're here with our friends. Hello friends. That sounds like we're transporting. Um, yes. Okay. So this is something that I've been thinking about for a long time. And I actually really wanted Raquel to join us on this, but she's busy so we're gonna jump into this and this um, is Raquel Villagante who is the third yes. person that started the in-person bombshell brunches when we yes. started having brunches not um, my second personality no 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 she has a different name duh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. such an unoriginal this is my other personality that's super boring and couldn't come also, up with Raquel. another name other than yeah, just you can what can we call her well also Raquel that's her name okay Good, good chat but please keep in good the job. also so that you can tell between the two of us. Just also Raquel yes. <laughs> oh okay but I wanted to have this conversation for a long time and Raquel was the first person who I had spoken to about it and it really like she's just she's such a wonder and it was the first person who was like yes I'm going through this right now and I'm like what I thought this was just me so we're gonna talk about pretty and all of the connotations that go along with it and I think in this time of oh my gosh talking about looks talking about beauty beauty's got such a massive industry um, yeah body acceptance right? I mean, body acceptance body positivity it's um it's it's got every angle so you've got the good sides you've got the bad sides what I want to talk about is the unspoken truths behind that. So one example that I think is just really clear is when you tell a little girl that she's pretty. So what people will often do is they'll give their daughter, niece, whatever, a hug or a kiss or whatever and tell them affectionately, you're so pretty. Mm. So it sounds nice, right? That, mm -hmm. that seems lovely. The other side of that is that she's now connecting affection, value, worth. to pretty. Mm. Right, worth to pretty. And that's the unsaid side. And that's the side that sticks with people. So then as soon as they start feeling like they're not pretty for a reason, okay, now I've hit puberty and I'm starting to get pimples. Oh, I've gained some weight. Oh, my hair is doing this weird thing. Now all of a sudden they start losing that sense of self-worth. And we're not running around usually telling boys this. So you start seeing how this can really affect people. You can see how this beauty industry is doing so amazingly. And yes. can I jump in for a second and also say just for, uh, there are so many different definitions of pretty, cute, adorable, yes. like, you know, all of these things. And also culturally, it can be really difficult because if you have a, um, you know, a kind of fat shaming society, if you have um, cultures that are not, you know, that conventional beauty is the only, their version of a conventional beauty. And it's so different for different places. So I just wanted you to take that word pretty for all of you who are listening and just put into that whatever word you were kind of affectionately given if it was based on a surface thing. So if it was based on like the way you looked or the the way not rather than a personality trait, um, yeah. I think that's what we're discussing. I just want to clarify because I know that coming from 
uh, different cultures can have a, have different impacts. And also, you know, having we can go into this, but not obviously today's not the, t- the day for it. But like when you're not gender um, conforming, when you when you're when you're growing up and you're like, but I want to be doing these things and I want to I feel this way and I don't look this way and I don't feel like that. You know, these are all part and parcel of that kind of let's complement the surface of you <laughs> and attach it to your worth. So I just want to yes. interject, but please go on because I love what you're where you're going here. Yeah. And I think, you know, what you're losing as well is the ability to compliment people on something that they can increase. So technically, mm. yes, we can increase quote unquote beauty with all of these things like surgery and products and whatever. But ultimately, your genes are your genes. You can't improve. And water. Hydrate, everyone. Like- <laughs> you can help yourself. You know, Hydrate. Sun, like, Not too much. Wear sunscreen. <laughs> If you're from the West Coast, you can get a little bit of sun. Anyway, wear sunscreen. Just Just always wear sunscreen. Okay. But, you know, when when you're learning, when you're going into school and you're doing well in academia and you're telling someone they're so smart, okay, that's something Mm. you can improve. You're telling someone they're such a good reader. That's something they can improve. You're telling someone they're good at sports. Okay, that's something they can It's also something they've invested in themselves, right? Like, I I love that you say that. I want to just underline that. But I also have a question for you because I think you and I had very different upbringings in terms of, like, for those of you who are not watching and haven't seen Raquel's face, like, I always talk about Raquel as this, like, dreamy Barbie that lives in some kind (laughs) of castle on a cloud world um, that is all these different conventional beautifuls. (laughs) Meanwhile, I, in my mind, look like a shriveled dumpling troll (laughs) lady. Um, That just, I mean, just by, just because by virtue of me being dramatic. Okay. (laughs) But, um, and you know, and I like, I like my face and I like my, my heritage and where I'm from. But I didn't always feel that way. And I think mm-hmm. uh, that's what I wanted to go into because there's a, a lot of different stigma growing up conventionally. And you and I have spoken very candidly about it. And I want yeah. to ask this and I want to highlight this because there are two different, there are very different types of beauty. Um, so, yeah. So, well, I What's don't know where question? I was. Well, the question <laughs> is, okay, I want you to explain to people how you grew up and how people looked at you, because I think that was, and then I'll, I'll have a little, we'll do a little story time with me and, uh, and the very, very different way (laughs) that I grew up and was kind of looked at until a certain point. So when you were, when you were a kid, like you've got big eyes, you've got like, you you've got fair skin, you look like a Disney princess. Let's be honest. You're like five, nine, or something five eight five five, five, what okay that's in in any way i'm looking upwards to see your face (laughs) um and you're very slim very athletic you know you have like an hourglass figure from what i can tell um and uh and you're really active so were you always did you always like you just kind of like grew up looking and I've seen your sister I know what Lucy looks like oh um, yeah but she's and, like unworldly but both of she's you are so stunning. stunning your mother is <laughs> stunning in this conventional way that we have put on a pedestal right in mm-hmm. western society it's like here's the epitome and it's very Dutch it's very um mm-hmm. it's got that very Nordic influence right <laughs> did you always grow up with people being like oh my gosh it's so cute like, oh my gosh, like, did you get that a lot? Tell me about how how you experienced people looking at your outsides. That sounds bad. I think it really depends what stage, like all of us. Um, but I also think that my view of it might have been different than you imagine. So um, I can't remember when I was really little. I think people did think I was really cute, but I I didn't it didn't sink in that wasn't something that's I don't have like any real stuck memories where I'm like that person so that's very cute and I enjoyed it <laughs> um it didn't really stick I will say a couple things um one is I've told you this when I went to elementary school I was in like a predominantly Asian elementary school so it was like one of just a couple white kids and so I always felt actually very big because everyone was built very small and 
as you know, in Asian culture, a lot of times weight is a big deal. And so they would talk yeah. about weight a lot. And they would talk and they would always be like mm -hmm. sharing numbers and they'd be like, well, I'm 105. And I was like, I, like you said, I've always been athletic. I was like, in yeah, my left thigh is 105. Like, <laughs> I was like, <laughs> literally, and they, and they would be like saying this and like, and what's you, like, what are you? And it was always very like mm. weight driven. Hmm. So in that, I felt super self-conscious because I was not really given a lot of opportunity to watch media, which I don't think is a bad thing. Um, but for me, like beauty standards in terms of media weren't really influential in my life because I just, I didn't watch, I wasn't really given TV to watch. I wasn't given cable. I think we would see a movie on the weekends. So I would have that. But other than that, like I wasn't really influenced by that. Other than that, it was like mostly sports and hiking and outdoors. Mm. So in that sense, like, to be honest, I just wanted to be like my friends. I wanted to be like <laughs> tiny. <laughs> you want to be a tiny Asian, don't we all? I wanted to be a tiny Asian, right? Like uh, totally. Um, so in that sense, there was that. And then the other flip side of it was, and I was actually just telling my boyfriend this today, I was like, you know, I remember because I, I think I grew up quite young. I remember being like 11, 12 years old and having grown men like stare at me. And oh. I was so disgusted, so disgusted. Like, well, yeah, because you start you start to learn what that look looks like. At yeah, that. and I was very too young. young. I mean, it's like, always I too was young. Let's be honest. Really, a young twelve-year-old. I wanted to play tag still. Like, I was not into boys. Like, mm. I remember a boy getting me a Valentine's Day gift, and I such a bad, like, terrible. But I just didn't know what to do with it. He got me a teddy bear in grade seven. What did I, you like... do? What did you do? <laughs> what did shocks. you do? <laughs> this poor God. person out there in the <laughs> world that's like. Listening. Can't hold a relationship down. Why? Why do you think that is? Sitting on the couch with the therapist. Why, why do you think that is? I don't know. I don't I, Wait. It all started I do know. Seven. It all started with a teddy bear. <laughs> oh my gosh, he got me this huge teddy bear and a box of chocolates. And I didn't know what to do with it. So I was like, oh, thanks. And then I like stuffed it in the cubby. <laughs> Okay, and sorry. I have a massive, I have such a problem with this because one, you said teddy bear and then gestured to like a medium sized teddy bear. Let's be honest. If you're going to be seven or eight or nine or 10 or 11 years old, then you can get a teddy bear that's like your size. Um, number two, I mean, maybe not your size because you were a giant. Um, you were gigantor, apparently. Um, number two, if someone gives you any kind of candy treat or food you don't put that somewhere else you put that straight into your face what is the matter with you you put you go thanks oh would you like one and that's nice that's that's a nice exchange and then you yeah, just continue eating nice. you yeah. monster putting yeah. that away in a locker i was like oh. embarrassed and people were talking about like oh what now like are you gonna go for a date and i just wanted to play tag like i didn't want to date anybody i didn't like that boys liked me i was so i can't so believe you're still hung up on that i can't believe you didn't just take and eat the chocolates i'm sorry i'm <laughs> this is what is jarring to me <laughs> oh my god but, but yes i yeah my okay mom is the most gorgeous woman ever she is. like yeah. she is literally so stunning so when i was little i was like it was it was like my friends and her. I was like, one day I want to be as beautiful as my mom. <laughs> well, okay, going back to what you first said, though, it's the I want to yeah. be. I want to be as beautiful yes. as. I would like, because again, you go back, you're like, oh, you're so cute, you're so pretty. And it's like, oh, and this is, okay, so just we'll go up to preteens level for me as well now, because I think that's a good parallel. Um, when I was little, being mixed race in Hong Kong, um, it was kind of like a double... Uh, it, it, there were two sides of the coin on one side people were like oh they're so cute and then on the <laughs> other side they were like oh they're just white babies <laughs> and so <laughs> then so mom got a lot of like kind of uh, she she really got judged as the maid people thought that my mother was our maid um because wow. it was colonial hong kong and there were a lot there was this thing called the hong kong princesses like i mean it wasn't <laughs> officially but it, what they would say is that you know you're 
the the stigma was that my mother married my father because my father was white and in order to get further in society and the reality was and sorry dad still is but <laughs> mom is way smarter than dad <laughs> uh, dad is smart too it's fine they're like different smarts but it was not true and mom was you know she was earning really good money she was probably earning more money than my dad she was more successful in a lot of ways um and it was a really bad stigma. So she she would take us out and we would get this, like we would get like poured over with these and we would get free food. And so going <laughs> to, the food thing so this really is where, and it didn't affect Raven. Uh, it didn't really affect Viv, we, my little sister. We left when Viv was very young, but Raven would be like standing there and she always looked so statuesque like in my mind i was like the little like bouncy boppy person <laughs> raven was like this swan that would just everything moved very slowly for her and she would arrive and i'd be like and i would be the person that would a hundred like i bet mum knew that i would be the one that would be taken because any kind of like dried piece of fruit and i'd be like i'll do anything i'll do anything <laughs> i'll go in the van i'll I go like in them. the van for free food <laughs> so thankfully raven was there my constant protector but the point is, we got told the same thing. We were like, oh, you're really, really cute, but you're also not part of us. You don't really belong with us, mm -hmm. but you're really cute. You're like this token cute, because it's so rare. Um, it's token, that's the- It's token cute. Yes. But then yeah. as I got older, I then went, when I, I was about 12, I think, and I, mm -hmm. moving from Hong Kong to New Zealand, we skipped two years. So we skipped two years of school. I grew up, I went into, a, I went to a private school in New Zealand was just, and at this, by, by that stage, like eight to maybe like, oh, I don't know, maybe six to. So you're two years younger than most of your. Yeah. Your two to two and a wow, half years. That's yeah. big at that age. It was very big from 12 to, yeah. and there I was in, I was 12 in a class with 15 year olds. Whoa. Um, and that was, so I grew up very quick, but, mm -hmm. um, and very awkwardly, but from eight to 11, I then went through what I like to call our Mowgli phase, where, where we just looked like these weird <laughs> rat creatures that were gangly, that hadn't quite grown into like our teeth and our eyeballs and our noses were weird. And we had no point of reference because no one looked like us. Like my, my other Eurasian friends were like the closest point of reference, but we did still look pretty different. And we'd left Hong Kong at that stage. So I couldn't even compare to my gangly other Eurasian friends that were like <laughs> growing weird different times. And so in my mind, I went from being like, oh, so cute to like, what is that? <laughs> What is that, that thing in the corner there that's like just like and I'm sure it wasn't as bad as I thought it was but meanwhile I moved to a predominantly white country mm -hmm. and no one looked like me and I couldn't I couldn't understand I remember running into my mum's room and being like I why am I so ugly and my mum being classic epic mother was like would you like me to give you something to cry about and I was like no never mind <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> you've met mom you know she's not like that um but when she has to be she really is so the point is i went through these phases and then i moved from new zealand to australia um so i was but like wait, before you go to australia i mm -hmm. thought new mm -hmm. zealand don't they have a lot of maori so don't they uh, have... yeah but not okay there was not in the private school that i went to so okay. I went to a private school for a few yeah. years and, uh, and no, there were not a lot of Maori okay. Samoans. My cousins, my cousins looked closest to me cause they're half Samoan. Um, okay. and so they looked pretty similar. And so we, yeah. we, at least we had them. Um, but when I went to this private school, it was like super white, very Aryan, very yeah. blonde. And that was the convention. And so I was just so upset that I didn't really fit into this. And then when I got yeah. attention, I had no idea why and what to do with it. And so- Oh my God, did you feel like there was something on your face? I always, that's I still do. I, when people look I, at me, I still do. Cause often there is, let's be completely honest. I am the clumsiest person in the world. Oh, so there, this never ends. So, but the, my point is when I went to Australia over a summer, and this is where a social experimenting comes in. But I was like, oh, I would, had been, I'd learned how to be invisible enough that people would leave me alone because I wasn't understanding what was happening. And it was like, it was not, uh, it was like uh, 
cognitively dissonant to me. So when I got attention or people would do things, I'd be like, what are you trying to do? What, what I don't understand. I'm not beautiful. Like, so why are you looking at me? Why are you paying attention? Like, what do you want? I was very suspicious. Then I moved to Australia and I'm in Melbourne, it's much more multicultural. I went to a public school. There were Greeks, Turks, Lebanese, um, mm. you know, Asians of all like South Asian, um, uh, Southeast Asian, East Asian, and then me. And I, I had learned and observed all of the cool people traits from the last school and moved and went down one year and was then closer to the right age mm -hmm. um, difference, uh, which I felt a lot more socially better about. Um, and then, and, and got boobs over that summer. And so I arrived and all of a sudden- <laughs> No, no, no. You arrived. I arrived. <laughs> and I was I still felt really impostery, but I still I felt like because there were so many different cultures and it was more about how I presented and I was growing into my awkward, weird, gangly face. Like I wasn't gangly at any way anymore. I yeah. was probably the opposite and put on a ton of weight. Um and uh and and so that was that was yeah, that's how I got up to that point. So I had a really flip floppy, but then I've had friends where I've had the same conversation. And they were like, oh, I've always been beautiful in my society. I've always been beautiful. I've always been accepted. It's always, and my older sister was a model for the longest time. So I've met people who have grown up and you've watched them grow up, just always be supermodel looking because they were supermodels. <laughs> okay, but right? here's my question is, did they enjoy that or not? Because even when I was like conventionally pretty, Mm. I didn't enjoy it. I didn't like the attention. It grossed me out. Like I just didn't. I want think it. that's personality traits. That different people and different. I one of my favorite conversations with was with a friend of mine, Declan, and and uh, and he was just so honest. He was like, mm -hmm. I recognize that my looks have nothing to do with me, but they allowed me to not have to form as strong a personality when I was growing up because I got away with a lot, and I saw that I got away with a lot. And I was like, that's a really interesting observation who's never seen anything different. And so for me, the reason I bring it up is because when people used to compliment me, they'd be like, oh my God, you have such a beautiful face. My response is still, I'll thank my parents and my ancestors. Mm -hmm. You're giving me a compliment that I had nothing to do with. And I don't say it in a rude way, but I'll say like, I'll thank my, I'll thank my parents and my ancestors. And they're like, yeah, you should. But it's a nice, I didn't want to be that person that's I don't, I think, and this is where we're going with this episode, right? Like yes. I, how you, det how you, how someone is trying to compliment you. If we want to affect systemic change, I personally believe it's not by saying, how dare you compliment me on something I don't have control over. It's much better if I can inspire someone to realize that what they're saying is not in my control. And so if they'd really like, I'd like to offer them an opportunity to give me a compliment or pay me a compliment if that's what they're trying to do with something that I can feel proud of and they can feel proud giving. And I think, again, this is where you and I have a lot of things in common where we're like, this is, it's upsetting when people have a lack of communication surrounding trying to give someone a compliment or to help someone along. Um, but it, but it also means we have to work on how to allow them to, to do it in a way that everyone feels better, you know? And I think unless you've lived in those shoes or heard someone talk about it who has lived in those shoes, you don't know. And that's the whole point of why I wanted to do this episode so bad. So mm. I really want to dig in. I think that's like the perfect segue. I really want to dig into kind of... Um, I've noticed in my life that a lot of compliments around pretty or beautiful or whatever are usually a bit backhanded. So they come with a flippant side of either, oh, good for you, you got this because you're so pretty. Oh, isn't like yeah. so oh. because you're pretty. Or, or not favorite, getting the job because you're not yeah. smart enough because if you're pretty you can't be both of those things that they're Girl, that's exclusive things <laughs> i literally remember a boss telling me this is in my career job this is not a boss in like milestones what like, other okay career, right okay yes i see i was like job. where are you going with this yeah <laughs> what kind of other bosses are there <laughs> where he was literally 
telling me, good for you for working here, because with looks like yours, you could be doing something else. And oh. I was like, okay. With so looks like surface, yours, you could be doing something <laughs> else. Right. And so I'm like, okay, so where are my looks going to take me? My looks that fade, P.S. So mm. I could be marrying for money. I could be. Yeah, where, like, where was the, like, what? something where I'm, like. Based on their I personality, do? what do you think they meant by that? Do you think they meant, like, you could marry well, find a suitor? Is that what you I don't know. I that's kind of either that or I could be I don't know, like modeling or something like that and I don't see anything wrong with modeling, but I'm like I you're discounting then the fact that I have worked years in mm. this profession, that mm. I have honed my skills, that I've gotten an education, mm. that I'm the first one in this office and I'm the last one to leave without a doubt, like every single day. The owner wasn't there before me and the owner didn't leave after me. You know, I always, I know I work in entertainment. I know I'm going to say this, but it does go back to representation in media. Like it really does. Like how many times and are we show, shown, you know, what someone gets when they look a certain way? And it's not just that they look a certain way, but that's a really big like incidental, right? It's a very subconscious incidental uh, that you brought up so well earlier. And I think that's, you know, because I want to think about the other side of this person's comment where is what he was saying, was he saying it because he was like, oh, I wish I didn't have to work so hard because I've had that conversation. You, I've had the conversation so many times and I've even heard people talking about me and being like, yeah, she got this because she's really smart. Like, look at her. Right. Mm -hmm. And I, it, the first time it actually happened was when I was learning how to sing. And I would get up on stage and me getting, and at this point I was like conventionally, I guess, or societally more accepted as a conventional, um, beautiful person instead of a Mowgli, which was uh, just a short couple of years earlier. Um, and, uh, and, and my current state this morning uh, in my mind. Anyway, but the point is when people would watch me get on stage, there was an expectation that I would be amazing that I, you know, like there was a command of this stage and then I, I would start to sing and within 10 seconds, everyone was just mortified. It was like <laughs> the worst episodes of, so you think you have talent or whatever TV show, like insert a TV show where someone is like, yeah, and, and I want you to do that Full thing. Full X Factor stuff. Just the... <laughs> Yeah, just the worst. Like I, yeah, and so it was like this really, and I could see every, I could see everyone's faces turn from like, but she's really pretty, so she should be only getting up there if she's really great or whatever. Like it was just this weird other thing, where if you're beautiful and in entertainment, then you should really be also be amazing at what you do, um, because that's the expectation. And so it's. And then when with work, it was the opposite where it's like, oh, well, you're really pretty. So you're probably doing this because, you know, you're not you're not having to make an effort. You just got that you got that person mm -hmm. to do that thing because look at you and the because look at you phrase really used to upset me because I was like, I just genuinely don't understand that the same way that I didn't understand when people would be like, oh, you're really funny. And firstly, I'm not funny. I'm not a funny person. I'm dry and sarcastic you make at me best. Laugh a lot. I think you um, you, everyone makes you laugh a lot. Like this, <laughs> the inanimate objects in your current room today will make you laugh a lot. I guarantee you. At some point, last episode we recorded, a lamp fell off a, ch a chair. You were hysterical. Yeah. What is that creature monster thing? It's exactly my point. Exactly my point. Um, but. My point is people are like, oh, you're really entertaining. Oh, you have some, you've got such a strong personality. And I'm like, <laughs> I like that as one. opposed to what? Like, <laughs> just being such a quiet. A strong <laughs> Let's be honest. It's, that's not wrong. <laughs> it's, it's an acquired taste. Um, but, <laughs> but this is why we do this, this show, by the way, just so that I can feel like someone does actually find me funny. <laughs> Um, this is really all about me. It's the Christina show. It's not. Raquel is, is the audience member. I'm just uh, here but... to make you feel good. <laughs> 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 uh, 
But going back to what you, but going back to your later experience, tell me more about how, how did you navigate that then? How did you navigate when, cause that would have happened a lot to you as well. Oh my gosh. It happened so much to me. And that's actually when I started talking to Raquel about all of this was because in that same job, it was mostly men working there mm. and definitely I was the only female at my level. Um, so I found myself dressing down like a <gasps> lot. Oh, the dressing oh, and down. And this is where Raquel and I just vibed so hard because so I dressed down a ton because I didn't want to be seen as anything sexual, anything pretty, anything hot, anything beautiful. Right. I was seen for my work mm. and that was it. And I didn't want anyone to think I was there for anything else. Um, and a hundred percent, a hundred percent there was doubt when there was pretty like mm -hmm. as soon as you look a certain way and it came in so many forms it came in the way my work was sometimes torn apart um it also came in terms of how i communicated with people so people would immediately think like oh she's flirting with me and I'm like, I'm having a very basic conversation with you. I also <laughs> I said hello. Asked you where you. the vending machine was. <laughs> I'm in a committed relationship. Like, I don't know how many more points we can have <clears throat> against this, but <laughs> oh. there was a lot of um, things that came into play that made me so uncomfortable in a situation like that. And I was talking to Raquel about it. And I don't know how we, it was after the bombshells. We had our first bombshell meetup mm. and her and I got together at an event after she was telling me how she had had similar issues and she had started dressing down uh, for her job as well, mm -hmm. um, which at the time had been a teaching position and it was how her students were reacting to her, her male students. Mm -hmm. And then she said, you know, one day I just decided I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm going to put them in their place and I'm not going to dim my light yeah. so that, so that other people treat me differently. Instead, I'm going to stand taller. And that, changed yeah. everything for me oh I'm so glad that did we had a Raquel Kentia and I had an amazing time <laughs> at that place working in the music industry can be really tough because and, and and in entertainment in general I'm and I can only speak for those industries in the last 10 years anyway 15 years but you know and hospitality is the same I mean I am sickened by some restaurants here that ha are notorious, like what is it, Cactus Club Earls? Like when yeah. I first mo walked in and was told that they were forced to wear heels and skirts, I High was mortified. Too, like, yeah, ones, like I was mortified by this culture and the fact that they were allowed to enforce it. They were allowed, and, and, and I think the reality is it's like, oh no, it's not, you don't have to wear them, but if you don't, you might not get shifts. Yeah. What? a crock of shit like i will i basically it, you have to drag me into one of those places um yeah. i will only go if there's no other choice and i really really dislike i i do not actively choose to go into those places at all because as much as i know that the people that work there do really well they you know i just think the whole hospitality industry is like so so flawed especially in this country and in north america where it's such a tip culture that you are then kind of not always but you you can tend to be felt to be subservient to what someone wants yeah. because you want that money and it's like that is not that is not good <laughs> i don't yeah. enjoy that i don't enjoy witnessing it and i don't enjoy the the how that impacts our culture these microaggressions and these these passive aggressive comments and and these very kind of repressive remarks um they i don't i think the impact is huge the impact is absolutely huge on our society and i think for everyone listening today i hope that whatever you do and again i go this is going back to what's your response what is your response when this happens and for for um, our, our Raquel Villagante. Um, Raquel is so amazing. She's perfect at doing this. And she's the reason that Bombshells is the way that it is, where the three of us were like, we don't like this. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're not going to do that. Let's, let's figure out how to <laughs> kindly 
not do that. Not aggressively, not subscribe to the same level of passive aggression, not to like comment back on this other person's lack of conventional beauty, which I've seen a lot in places as well, where people are like, oh, why are you talking to me? You're so ugly or you're so this, or, you know, no. like I've heard, you, 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 when you're growing up, you, you know, that's people are mean, people are mean to each other, right? And they'll pick on the same surface both sides right mm -hmm. they'll say something about it both sides and they'll say you're only saying that because you're pretty well you wouldn't know because you're hideous like it's we're a mean culture sometimes um and the reality is i think changing that is so so difficult but so necessary and how we start to like encourage each other to change that i think means more than anything so doing it in a kind way and being like you know when when someone says oh you look great like I've had people who are like hey that's a really nice skirt that looks so great on you um and I know what the subtext is but yeah. what I do is then personality them back and I'm like <laughs> oh my gosh I am gonna tell you a story I'm gonna tell you where I got it and they're like this is way too much information I didn't want all of this <laughs> but <laughs> inevitably with my Mowgli channeled charm. I'm like, look, look at this tag. Look, it's this, it's from this place. And this place is my friend. And I'm a fan, blah, blah, blah. And by the end of it, 99% of the time, someone's like, oh, this person's engaging in conversation with me. Like, and that's it. It's gone past me being like, I'm, I know they didn't see me originally as a human being. They saw me as a piece of ass. They saw me as whatever they saw. They mm -hmm. saw me as whatever the opportunity was. But they're still a human being who probably wasn't taught by their people around them how to communicate interest. And then yes. having a response back that is like, oh, I'm not going to say, oh, well, well, I don't know you. I have a boyfriend, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. I've never said any of, I, I very quickly learned not to say anything about any of my relationship, anything, because I didn't like that either. But in the workplace as well, people don't know what that boundary is and you have to learn it together in a lot of ways. And saying like, I, you know, when someone says you should say you're really uncomfortable if someone compliments you, I'm like, but I really like my dress. I want compliments. I like <laughs> compliments. I spent years being Mowgli <laughs> and not my face and what I chose to wear. It was terrible. I made terrible choices. I looked like a potato. It's also brave. <laughs> Like when people come up to you, it's vulnerable. <clears throat> and I mean, unless they're in a huge group and, and are actually <sighs> coming up yeah. to you in an unsafe way, um, it is yeah. it is a vulnerability. And so I, I totally agree. And I'm not there for squashing anybody. I think um, it is all about educating. And a lot of it is about educating further than the surface i think that's the mm. that's the biggest takeaway is yeah when you say something think about you know what that means further down the line mm -hmm. um, do you can i give you an example my favorite favorite example and i just i have watched this film probably 40 times and it's i'm due to watch it again because it's puzzle season and i have my london view from the west puzzle out and so it's ready for aaron brockovich time but there is a scene <laughs> in aaron brock of course um there's a scene in aaron brockovich where someone says you know the women are in this in this office are feeling uncomfortable and i think it's set in the 80s or 90s and uh, and the boss is like the women are and it's just so beautifully acted by everyone involved um and he says, uh, Ed, the character is, I think it says that these women are just, they're just, well, they're just not feeling like you fit in. And uh, they think that your clothes are a little bit uh, revealing. And Julia Roberts, Aaron Brockovich turns around and says, um, do you, do you, I think, do you think that I give a bleep uh, what <laughs> they think about me? And he was like, well, I just think if you want to get along. And basically she turns around and says, I like what I wear. I really like what I wear. And so if it is not a legal issue with you, I will continue to wear what I'm, what I please. Cause I feel good in these clothes. This is how I feel empowered. And I loved that scene so much because for the, I'll be honest, when I watched it, I was like, I was conditioned by my society of like, oh, no, don't wear that. That's really revealing. That's really booby. And that's really, you know, and you're kind of 
Mm. You're making choices based on what people are telling you is is appropriate. And while I think that, you know, there are certain things that we do that are, oh, we're, we're a part of our society and, and our conventions, do, are they go in trends. I think if something feels, it helps you to feel really empowered and it's not causing someone else some really grave um, response. Slight. <laughs> yeah. And, and that's where the, that's where the nuance comes in. Right. Because if you mm-hmm. like, I'm not asking, I'm not saying to everyone to go around with no, no trousers and no pants on, like, don't, I don't, I'm not encouraging that level of like, like you still have to participate in some of the cultural norms in society, mm-hmm. but you know, I uh, ask the question of like, what, how does this make me feel? And is this making me feel good? Because I, feel empowered by it. I feel like I've chosen a dress that works well with my shape and well with my size and, and that I feel really like comfortable in like, yeah, choose those things and then help other people understand if they say, wow, you're so pretty or you're so beautiful, you know, start experimenting with changing that narrative and helping them to like pivot around because the underlying thought is probably something else, but not the same with bosses. what I really not the same with bosses. Not always the same with bosses. <laughs> like Um Yeah. That's what you were talking about with 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 previous employment where someone is like, mm-hmm. there's a different glass ceiling. It's like, well, she you know, what they'll put you into a context of how they let you into the room. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, that's a very good point. And I think the Aaron Brockovich example brings me to something that a professor told me years ago um, that I've always held on to and I thought it was so, so important and I think that actually demonstrates it for an adult really well. But he was explaining this in terms of feminism for kids. And so Mm. he said, you know, I have a daughter, I'm a feminist, and he explained how his wife had wanted to get her daughter um, a bikini. It was like a little kid bikini, you know, Mm -hmm. whatever. And he was like, there's no way. She's like, why? And he said, because what you're doing is you're telling her that her body is shameful, that she needs to hide this part of her. And then there's little boys running around and they're not hiding that. Oh. Same thing with the Erin Brockovich example. Mm-hmm. You're telling her that her chest, for example, because she always wore those shirts. Also, I just realized why we get along so well, because our favorite movies are definitely the same. But... <laughs> You're telling her that that's shameful, that her body is shameful. Right. And that's why you need to hide it. So I think going that next step and looking at why something makes you uncomfortable before saying it, going that next step and thinking about um, what a compliment really means before you say it. Mm -hmm. Um, And I say things too, like my little sister is stunning and I tell her she's beautiful But then I always think about it and I go, okay, what's another compliment I can give that she actually has control over? Yeah, have a compliment palette. Yeah, yeah, right? Like, Mm. I'm not saying you shouldn't tell someone they're beautiful. I love being told I'm beautiful. Do you you know what? (laughs) I I, all the time. (laughs) Uh, One of my favorite compliments is when someone says, oh my gosh, you look so beautiful. And I'm like, oh my goodness, are you talking about my dress? Because and I do not give them a chance to argue with me. I'm like, are you talking about my dress? Cause it's from my favorite designer, Leonard Taylor. And he's in Winnipeg and I just got my new, and I did, I actually did that exactly this morning. I like ran out and was like, look at my new dress that I got, it's one of a kind. <laughs> um, or I will say like, I bought this new makeup and I love wearing it. I mean, okay, I'm not gonna say that cause my makeup is super old and, and Nadia who is- But how about Nadia's instead of you are so beautiful, say something like you look like you're really glowing. I'm, say, I'm saying the radiant. response, I'm saying my response to someone telling me I look beautiful is I will pivot it yes, and say, yes. the, like, I'm so happy you said that cause I love my outfit today. And then if they mm-hmm. turn around and say, but your face is beautiful, I'll be like, oh my gosh, thank you so much. Like way less to do with what I chose (laughs) and I'll like make it into a fun thing but I'll be like but I really appreciate that and I appreciate the sentiment you know yeah um but I like you know because people I don't know about you I'd be nervous to go up to someone and like I do that now I've tried to normalize like I'll go up to someone and be like you look so well put together and that to me is such a wonderful compliment because I had choice over that those were choices I made so you're complimenting the choices that I made 
And I think even with looks, like that's kind of the examples that I was trying to give is like you're glowing. Your mm. glowing says you're probably eating really well. Yeah. You're probably feeling really good. Mm -hmm. When you're happy, you glow. Or, you know, if someone sees you and they know that you've been working out or you've been doing whatever, whatever it is yeah. that's kind of making you shine from the inside out. Um, mm. Those are compliments that you do have control over. Those are things that you are actively doing for yourself and for your health. And, and I think those are those are really nice. So maybe it's more just expanding our vocabulary on complimenting people in general. Um, maybe we just need to like throw out the old pretty and get a little creative. <laughs> yeah, what's a good compliment library? Just look at the things and be like, oh, let's make a little yes. compliment library, a let's little bookshelf. Let's actually post that. We'll oh. post that in the stories. I want to hear everyone's compliment library. Maybe we can compile it. And put it oh my together. gosh. And then can we make it like, make them actual books? Let's ask Glenn. Glenn knows how to Photoshop <laughs> Glenn, make the all the books happen. and we'll put titles, little compliment <laughs> titles. You look glowy. He's gonna Is that a new dress? Shake his head. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn does so much. <laughs> uh, well, okay. But the, in the, uh, the final note of this, I think, is really going back to that employment piece and um, how you operate in, in, in working society. Because I, I moved to Vancouver. It's very, uh, we call it athleisure here, where people walk around in like this branded like yoga pants that I just, I, I continue to not understand. However, I did buy myself my first <laughs> pair of blunt stones, <laughs> which yeah, are these Australian brand shoes that are, I kid you not, the most comfortable things I've <laughs> ever. They are foot pillows. To, to to rival any foot pillow you've ever tried in your life. Like I I am just so happy in them and they are not <laughs> heels or conventionally beautiful looking. They're like the Shrek of shoes, but the Shrek of shoes that you want to wear every single day and match your wardrobe accordingly. And I'm looking around and being like, I finally got on the train. I'm like, my friend turned around and he was like, you're finally a Vancouver, right? You're wearing a North Face jacket and <laughs> and uh, and blunt stones. And I was like, Harrison, I've become, a, I've become a Vancouver, right? But was secretly really happy because I was so comfortable and warm. Anyway, my point is, um, I, I dress, I like to dress not according to the culture I live in. I like to dress with really well thought out pieces. And Raquel, our other Raquel, um, also does the same. She loves vintage shopping. She loves finding pieces. Mm. You're like that with your, there's your horse riding brand that is like really mm. upscale, like really cool, yeah. like um, vibe, but it's their conversation pieces. Like, yeah. and so when I go into work of any kind, I'm dressing as my future self i'm dressing as the uh, like as the owner of the empire that i am currently building that's how i'm dressing and i i think i want to hope that all of you feel empowered to be able to do the same in your way whatever that looks like and that might look like blunt stones and lululemons and and um and north face jackets like as long as you are owning that and that is your that's the your ceo of your it's life your look I think yeah. it needs to be your essence and yeah. you grow into. Yeah, and that, that then it, the, the, the piece that's tricky then is about coming along with us and figuring it out just as we are all the time to understand how to allow people to continually shift into seeing that as being a part of value and not whether or not we get opportunities and that is going to be hard and that is challenging but every every systemic change that we try and make on a micro level in response to a microaggression is difficult and it takes a lot more thought it takes five times more weight to move that piece forward a little bit I, if anyone's watching this on youtube i have no idea what i'm doing with my hands right now but they're like little tiny like dumpling fingers that are like <laughs> claws that are we're just moving we're moving I, it was like a board game. <laughs> I don't know it wasn't like i i don't know it's kind of like a weird like or like a pac-man yeah weird <laughs> weird pac-man things anyway anyway um so that we can build this empire of um true complimenting with a good compliment library for each of us one Please and for comment. all <laughs> and all for one. We're gonna put, we're gonna put a post up and and i'm hoping that everyone who's listening can leave a well thought out creative compliment 
in the comments so that we can we yeah can don't make it too long though because it's got to fit on the spine of a book that glenn's going to photoshop into a fake library that we can then put on as well or if you all really want to laugh at glenn make it really long <laughs> <laughs> don't laugh at glenn <laughs> don't do that uh. <sighs> Oh my god. Great. Well, this was good chats. This is something I've wanted to talk about for a long time. So yeah. And we, we miss you, Raquel. We know that Raquel's um she's yes. so busy being the most fabulous human being in the world, so can't blame her. Um <laughs> but uh we'll we'll bring Raquel on another time. All right, beauties. Um stay showy gliny. Yeah, showy showy gliny? Glowy shiny <laughs> is what I meant to say. Stay <laughs> showy. I, I like showy gliny better. Stay showy and kind of glimmery and slimy. Slimy, glimmery, showy, glimy. Glimey. Glime on. Glime. On Glime. <laughs> God, this is good. Glime on. Glime on. Bumshell brunches. Full of glime. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Okay, bye. <laughs> <laughs>